Hazmat Solutions is proud to introduce the 2020 Emergency Response Guidebook video. The Emergency Response Guidebook has been a vital resource for first responders, transporters, and industries during the initial phase of a hazardous material incident. The first portion of the film will discuss some of the changes to the ERG, and the remainder will highlight the various sections of the book and provide a general overview of how to use the guidebook in a chemical emergency. So what changes have been made since the 2016 version of the Emergency Response Guidebook? Special markings have been added to the 2020 ERG to warn responders and transporters to the hazards of lithium batteries. Lithium metal batteries are water reactive and may react vigorously or explode upon contact with water. Lithium ion batteries contain flammable liquid electrolytes that may vent, ignite, and produce sparks when subjected to high temperatures. A decontamination section has been added to address direct contamination versus cross-contamination and describes the four kinds of decon, gross, technical, mass, and emergency decontamination. Direct contamination happens in the hot zone, while cross-contamination occurs when someone or something was not properly cleaned and they come into contact with another person or object in the warm or cold zones. Emergency and mass decon can be done with firefighting and rescue operation equipment, while technical decon will require a systematic decontamination process to thoroughly remove contamination, capture runoff, and minimize the spread of contamination to others and the environment. The definition of an organic peroxide has been added to the glossary to reinforce the fire and explosion hazards associated with organic peroxides. For firefighters, information about flooding quantities of water was also added to the glossary. Information has also been added to the ERG to differentiate between a boiling liquid expanding vapor explosion from a high-pressure LPG tank and a heat-induced tear. A blevy has thermal radiation, blasts, and projectiles, while heat-induced tears still have the intense heat, but rarely project fragments from the petroleum rail tank car. As part of the 2020 ERG development, FEMSA funded an independent review of the Orange Guide pages. Respected members of the first responder community and HAZMAT emergency response instructors, in coordination with the Department of Homeland Security, as well as the National Fire Academy, all provided additional guidance. There was a comprehensive review of each sentence in the orange pages, and the result is more detailed information with less general statements. For example, Structural firefighter protective clothing provides limited protection in fire situations only is now Structural firefighters protective clothing provides thermal protection but only limited chemical protection. The isolation distance, sometimes called the hot zone, was formerly located in the public safety section. It is now found as the first bullet point in the evacuation section. Guide 121 was merged with Guide 120, and caution sentences were added for specific materials. For example, ethanol can burn with an invisible flame. Use an alternate method of detection. Each guide page will have a title describing the type of hazardous substance. In this case, the material is a gas with the additional characteristic of being toxic and or corrosive. First responders should immediately consult this section. The primary potential hazard will always be listed first, which will allow for quick, vital decisions to protect themselves and the community. The public safety information is divided into three sections. General information describes the initial precautionary measures for those first on the scene, protective clothing guidance, and suggested evacuation distances. In this section, the term isolate means a zone of non-entry, unless you are properly trained, equipped, and ready to begin mitigation efforts. 
However, the term evacuate indicates people should be removed from this area if it is safe to do so. For materials highlighted in green, in the blue and yellow pages, responders are directed to Table 1. These specific response distances are for toxic and poisonous inhalation substances, water reactive materials, and for chemical warfare agents. The emergency response section is divided into three subsections. What to do in the case of a fire, spill, or leak, and what general first aid measures should be administered until chemical specific information is available from safety data sheets or medical resources. Table 3, which lists protective action distances for the six most common toxic inhalation hazards, are now listed according to the ID numbers. A visual tab has been added to the border to differentiate between green tables 1, 2, and 3. Information about container capacities can be found on page 350, and some of the distances in Table 3 have been revised based on further testing. 13 additional changes for the 2020 ERG will be deferred until 2024. This has been a brief overview of some of the changes to the Emergency Response Guidebook. So let's take a look at some of the additional information that will be useful at the time of a hazardous material incident. It is vital to obtain as much information as possible on the way to the scene of a hazardous materials incident. The decision of whether or not it is safe to approach the accident is based on the first pieces of information. Your decisions may be continuously revised as new data becomes available. As the first responders approach the scene of a hazardous materials incident, they should always try to stay upwind, uphill, and if possible, upstream from the release. Then try and obtain as much information as they can from a distance. Do you only know the UN number? If so, start with the yellow bordered pages. This section has hazardous materials listed by their UN or identification number with the goal of finding isolation distances or response recommendations from the appropriate Orange Guide page. If you can read the name of the hazardous materials, use the blue bordered pages to find the correct guide page. In this case, the leaking drum contains sodium hydroxide and therefore has a guide number of 154. If the only information available is a label or placard, turn to pages 10 and 11 to find the generic response guide page. This will be the three-digit number located in the black circle. Use this information until the chemical is identified or a safety data sheet becomes available. If no placards or markings are visible on a rail tank car or highway road trailer, the silhouette of the tanker can be used to obtain a generic initial emergency response guide page. The shape and size of the transport and location of valves and fittings can be an indicator of the type of material and the maximum working pressure for the container. For example, a high pressure rail tank car will have the valves and fittings under the dome whereas a general service tank car normally has the fittings and valves visible at the top of the tank. If the material's name is highlighted in green in either the blue or yellow bordered pages and is on fire, consult the appropriate orange guide pages for the evacuation distances and then protect in the downwind direction according to Table 1 in the green section. If the material's name is highlighted in green but it is not on fire, Use the isolation and protective action distances from Table 1 and consult the Orange Guide pages for more safety and response information. If the product includes the reference, When Spilled in Water, consult Table 2 for a list of gases that may be generated and do not use water or foam as an extinguishing agent. Again, if the material is highlighted in green, in the yellow or blue bordered pages, the material itself is toxic if inhaled. Table 3 lists six common toxic gases with the type of container and capacity of each. A leaking rail tank car of chlorine would have an initial isolation distance of a thousand meters 
or 3,000 feet, in all directions. If the release is at night with a wind speed of 5 miles per hour, first responders would need to either evacuate or shelter in place for more than 7 miles. On the page following the flowchart, take a minute to list all the cleanup contractors, hazmat teams, and rail companies, as well as any local, state, or federal resources you may need at the time of a hazmat incident. While the flowchart will walk you through the strategies for a response, the table of contents has all the guidebook's additional resources. The guide begins with how to use shipping papers, located on the inside cover to a list of emergency response numbers on page 393. Understanding all safety precautions in this book will help you assess the situation and, if necessary, obtain additional help. By getting familiar with the 2020 ERG, you can quickly identify specific hazards of a material and protect yourself as well as the community. If you are not familiar with warning labels and placards, the number at the bottom of the placard is the hazard class. This number tells you the class or type of hazardous material. To help identify the hazards of a drum, box, or container, the DOT and OSHA have adopted portions of the Globally Harmonized System of Classification and Labeling of Chemicals, or GHS. The inner label for combination packaging, or outer label for a drum, are required to contain hazard communication information, such as a warning symbol known as a pictogram. In addition to DOT and GHS warning labels, Pictograms quickly help warn the public of potential health, physical, and environmental hazards. Many overseas shipping containers, also known as intermodal containers, will have orange panels. The top section will advise the public as to the hazards inside the container, and the lower rectangle will provide the UN number of the material. An additional DOT warning placard may or may not be displayed. Millions of miles of gas and petroleum pipelines are buried throughout the U.S. Detailed pipeline identification and response information are located beginning on page 22. We strongly encourage first responders to read the Protective Action Distance and the ERG's 2020 User's Guide sections. If you are called to the scene of a suspicious package or vehicle, Use the IED chart on page 373 to determine the mandatory and preferred evacuation distances. Hazmat terminology can be confusing, so an extensive glossary is available starting on page 375. Many of the chemistry, toxicology, WMD, and firefighting terms are explained. This short video is just the first step in learning how to use the ERG. Reading all the sections of the book and asking questions of supervisors will help to protect you and possibly the community. Always follow your standard operating guidelines when responding to a chemical emergency. The instructors from Hazmat Solutions are very grateful for your service to the community. Please stay safe and may God bless you.